Anyways, I know we started this already, but I, I want to talk about, I feel like we're wandering. I, I have a topic that we have brought up before and I'm interested in talking to you guys about it. I'm interested in hopefully having someone chime in. Maybe Jeff Robinson could chime in, but um, about like using tech, lo-fi tech to make your stuff, music sound shittier. Is it, is it valid? Is it sacred? Is it is music sacred and it's desecrating it by using lo-fi filters and stuff? Um, I just have a lot of questions about it. I used to be a super Puritan and like it would rub me the wrong way. I would still have Shane like put lo-fi stuff on it, but it would rub me the wrong way. And then you told me a quote, Shane, that was like, who said if it sounds good, it is good? Um, I don't know. I feel like I you told me. Shane said that. Oh, maybe it's just from Shane. I thought it was either from Shane or Shane quoting someone who said, if it sounds good, it is good. And then I was like, okay, fuck, I guess, I guess that's what it should go by. Well, there's not, I do not give a fuck what people use. If it sounds good, it is good. The, I think, I think you're paraphrasing. You might be paraphrasing this like heavy hitter mixer guy named Andrew Sheps who said that the most important thing was, when the music came out of the speakers that you had no control over how someone would hear it. And so it didn't matter what you did to it, what you didn't do. It didn't matter if you had an explanation to make something okay that wasn't okay. You can't explain it once the music comes out of the speakers and hits the person's ear. Any explanation doesn't matter. It's like just moot. Got it. I don't know if that was that something that you were talking about. Um, was that? get your freak on. Remember this the other day? Is pretty when I mild. Was, remember when I was telling you the other day about how like your perception of stuff is gets all effed up because of like so like my perception of like what um what uh, album covers looked like was uh all pretty much. Uh, dictated by this tiny screen that's like, like, you know, twenty pixels by twenty pixels, and I was like, "That's that's what Missy Elliott looks like." Okay. Yeah. S- sorry. It's a, it's a lo-fi image. No, we can work that in. Um, but it's like so. Uh, Justin Vernon, Bone of Air, right? My man, Bone. My main man Bone. He he did. Uh, I want to call it. I want to get to know him just so I can call him that. I'm like, Yo, Bone, what's up? Um. Anyway, so he did. Remember his for Emma forever ago. Where he did it in the woods, man. Did you hear? He went to the to his cabin and like you can hear an ambulance in the background, like in one of his tracks, and it's so like authentic, bro. That's like what everyone was saying when it came out. Wait, 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 wait. Uh-huh. Let's let's ex- examine what you just said. He went to his cabin in the woods. You can hear an ambulance in the background. I don't know if that... that... That doesn't make sense. Why would there be an ambulance in the woods? I might be making that shit up, but you can hear some <laughs> artifact from something in the background. I like my Google search right now. It's like Final Cut Pro, Kaleidoscope Affected Movies, Tiggo Biddies. And we all like to see Tiggle Biddies get low lyrics. Those are my last searches. Sometimes, um, sometimes I, I wish I could. Uh, my YouTube searches are hilarious. I feel like I don't do have them. I don't have any data to back that up though. I'm trying to. Okay, maybe maybe the there wasn't an ambulance, but there is. I swear to God, some hipster told me this. And like, I think you meant ambience. <laughs> maybe that I think he was in a cabin in the woods and there was ambience and you just thought that there was an ambulance that went I ain't taking the L for that I whoever told me said ambulance <laughs> maybe they maybe they mistook it that's fine but I didn't I didn't hear that and be like switch it up but okay well let's let's uh like even on skinny love like do you hear how like off the different guitar strokes are on there. Like, do you think he tried to do that? Or do you think 
that just happened. I think it just happened because he took like two takes. Probably. It was just me. I don't think anyone tries to be like off on purpose on their music. But I think, I, I do think if they ha- if they do the take and they're like, yeah, this is fine. This is actually kind of cool. We want to hear the most significant lo-fi song that is in your brain, listeners. Yes. Okay. Gabby, what, what, what did you have to say about just uh, shitty sound quality or shitty performance on purpose? I mean, listen, it's a choice. I think I have a bigger issue with people like being like analog sluts than I do like people trying to get that sound. Does that make sense? Like people who are like, can we shorten that? Can we shorten that to anal sluts? No, (laughs) Um, because anal sluts will get mad at you. Dude, I thought about whether I should say that or not. Again, I was like, that's co-opting anal slut culture. Um, Anyways. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, like, I think that like, yeah, my bigger issue is people who are like, no, if you don't use, like, if you're not recording on tape, then, like, it's not, like, there's, it It sounds, it just, like, sound, you can tell the difference. You can hear the yeah, difference. Like the so I'm like, yeah, you can, hear, whole, you can hear the difference. It's worse. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. You can always did a whole take, album recently about that, didn't they? And you can always take information, you know, like, so when you record music or whatever, you're you're recording information about the performance, whether it's like, you know, just like, you know, bits of information. You can always take that away and destroy stuff, but you can't put it back in. And so for me, it's like, why wouldn't you record shit digitally and then take it away digitally? Where if like, if you record analog, first of all, not only is it just like more tedious and annoying... But also, you can't ever go back the other way. I don't know. People are like, there's like just like a warmth that you can't recreate. It's just this and vibe, I, man. And I feel like that's BS. I like I can't help thinking that it's kind of BS. And it's like it feels like a little classist too, because it's like, okay, who can afford all that fucking equipment right now? You know, Mm -hmm. like, only, like, super, like, rich, hipstery weirdos can afford to record on tape. Because not only do they not fucking make it, but, like, you have to then spend all this time and effort and whatever. And you have to find an engineer who will work with you or you have to learn to do it yourself. Whereas, like, you know, almost anyone can get a halfway decent microphone and, you know, for like $200, start recording something at your house, you know? And so it just, if like, I don't know, part of me tries, maybe I'm like looking into it too much, but like, it feels like kind of classist. Because guess, yeah. like who, it's like that, that Pitchfork article recently about Milwaukee bands and yes. our Milwaukee rappers. And they were like... They were basically like, yeah, it sounds really shitty. And it was like, well, yeah, like, most of these people have jobs and shit. Like, they're not, (laughs) they are not professional full-time artists, most of them. So, uh, yeah. I thought the tone of that article, though, was kind of like. It was a weird, it felt weird. It was, it felt like a weird backhanded, like, compliment or, like, something. Um, Like, they tried to be chill about the fact that they were calling them out for uh for basically sounding like shit but it, the couple few rappers who i'm friends with on facebook were just loling and posting about it like yeah they got called out like no one felt for the fact that they were like they don't care about their aesthetics it's cool like we all kind of felt that they were kind of looking down on them i well maybe not all of us i but mean I, it, I feel us. like it might be also some like chicago supremacy happening like <laughs> I don't think Chicago rappers or, like, people who are, like, big fans of Chicago rappers are ever going to be like, yeah, Milwaukee's really good at rap because, like, Chicago has such an established scene that's, like, I don't know, and a lot of, you know, there's just, like, a lot of Pitchfork based there. 
you know. But why can't Milwaukee be like Portland? You know, like Portland wasn't a big, like it was a off the map big city. It was a little big city, you know, and somehow that got to be way cooler than because, because it was. we haven't had rich hipsters gentrify it yet. Mm, I see. Like I see Milwaukee is still overwhelmingly poor and overwhelmingly like not cool in like people's eyes like portland is like cool because like rich hipsters started going there and like thinking it's like oh this is authentic this is whatever but like uh no one's done that in milwaukee yet that moment where um, you're stuck between like man we just need rich hipsters to move here and make us cool and on the other side being like that's exactly what we don't need that's mm-hmm. terrible like idea. i think milwaukee's like for all its problems is is dope but i think it's dope so the the Milwaukee rap pitchfork like the songs that they brought up like they they didn't sound good like but that doesn't make it bad like that could add to the vibe of the song i don't know if they're necessarily it I, felt like a weird thing to mention if you're going to feature it you know yeah but i mean like if it was if they were talking about pavement and they were talking about slanted and enchanted, which is also extremely lo-fi. For a which hot was, second, I was like, are you talking about all our potholes? Uh, oh, yeah. Because no, Milwaukee yeah. doesn't fill in our potholes. Oh, yeah. You're yeah, a yeah, sweet yeah. summer child, Gabby. You, have, she you don't remember. Band called I, do, I know that he was talking about the band, but for a split second, because you were talking about Milwaukee, I was <laughs> like, and we have such shitty infrastructure. I was like, yeah, our pavement. To Gabby and all the Gen Z people, there is a band called Pavement. From do you not have a giant early. pavement poster in your? He like, threw it out. Like, that one ripped. Okay, and I'm. Are you sad, sad about it? Just so don't bring it up. It's sensitive. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm so very sorry. It was Whatever. a very cool poster. He didn't care. No, he still has a T-shirt that I bought him. It's all good. Yeah. I, uh, except I stopped just wearing any t-shirts except for these V-neck white t-shirts <laughs> he's uh, like one now. year ago because uh, I'm 80 and the <laughs> coronavirus made it so I didn't have to leave my house and now I'm comfortable never leaving my house. But anyway, I feel like uh, Pitchfork, you know, a lot of people want to get salty about uh, them mentioning the recording quality not being good but i feel like if it was pavement they would do the same thing they would be talking about how slanted enchanted was like this off the cup thing that was recorded on some shitty 16 track at someone's got some guy's house and that would that would be described in their write up of pavement and i'm but sure what did they it, did pavement it, it, do it, it for did payment do it for like some, you know, pretentious no. hipster reason? No, they just did it because like they were friends with this guy and th- that's who they picked to have record their record because they okay. didn't really have like a super amount of money. And I think they didn't want to spend a whole lot of money on recording. Well, um, kind of same with like earlier Liz Fair, right? I, let, look, I'm literally Googling Pitchfork and Liz Fair Whoa. right now. <laughs> Weird. I was trying to reader. say like, because I was like... I was like, isn't early Liz Fair like notoriously shitty? And so I was looking up to see if Boom. they treated it the same way. <laughs> Crazy. Great minds, etc. Psychic ass shit, Jana. Thanks. It happens sometimes. But yeah, okay, but those were all organically lo fi. Yeah. All the like, it, it, uh, so pit, uh, the pavement, same thing with the Milwaukee same thing rappers. with the with the Milwaukee rappers. Yeah. Like I don't know why everyone's getting like bent out of shape about it. It's it's just uh uh, I think no, it, I think I think it's I think it's their way of saying that it's genuine. I think it's I, cool. I think it's literally what they're trying to say is that it's like a genuine sound. Um, yeah, I don't know. But the the that's why it kind of rubs me the wrong way when you are when you do have some means to record better and you don't. And I'm saying that with the knowledge and disclosure that I do that. Like that's why it. I could see people getting uh what is what is Gabby showing? Pavement. Pavement. This is also oh, in this slanted. pitch for an article about Liz Fair. <laughs> <Well. Right. laughs> that's that's funny. Yeah. Excellent. Weird. 
But I guess I guess that makes me. But maybe not. Pitchfork higher than me because apparently we all have the exact same ideas. Yeah, pitchfork yeah, higher us. Get, we're from we're from Milwaukee, Milwaukee, and we're kind of like country bumpkins, but we're not in the country. But that wouldn't matter to you guys. You would laugh at us at parties still. Yeah, pitchfork. We would yeah. be called flyover people or yeah. whatever. We're we're like the 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 guy from uh, American Movie that was on David Letterman, so we could be your Mark. Uh, I can't remember his last name. We're just geographically challenged. Yeah. Who, who are you talking about? You guys ever saw American Movie? Uh, I I haven't oh seen, God. but I know who that Home. is. Mark Borchart. He's like a Milwaukee icon. Yeah, I've seen him around like River West once in a while. Um, but okay, so that makes me think. Then I'll get, I'm going back. I'm going to contradict myself that we shouldn't be because we have Shane Studio, which is capable of higher quality recording. Is it inauthentic to try to like you know make it sound lo-fi? I don't think we're really making things sound lo-fi, but at the same time. I, I've said this a million times. The reason why I have my setup how it is is because my favorite records, they aren't good sounding records. Like Slan and Enchanted is one of my favorite records of all time. Early Velvet Underground stuff is my favorite stuff of all time. I love Guided by Voices, which was recorded on a four track, like, or at least their four track stuff I like. Tom um, Waits and his Closet album. Yeah, yeah. My my favorite Tom Tom Waits my, record is Bone Tom Machine, which was recorded in a, a closet of a studio in, in a, like, an actual recording studio. Cigarettes. That's my Tom Waits impression. That's pretty it's good, good. Gabby. Thank you. Yeah. Fantastic. Did you see that one interview where Tom Did you say Waits, Chevy Town? I said Chevy Tahoe. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a YouTube video where Tom Waits is on like some show and he sounds exactly like Heath Ledger's Joker, which made everyone think that Heath Ledger took inspiration from Tom Waits. Did anyone see that? Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Famous YouTube clip. I would like to ask Heath Ledger, but I don't think that's going to happen. Guess what? He's dead. Um, <laughs> anyways, yeah, I, I don't know. I, th- I think that like, <laughs> I don't think any of our music is necessarily lo-fi sounding. Yeah, thanks a lot, Brett. It's not, but I would like <laughs> elements of it are like ones we're working on now. Like Jana's intro for City Stars kind of start a piece of it is lo-fi. Your vocals are lo-fi in that, right? Well, I mean that's different than like that's different than making something sound like just trash, though. Like for okay. the whole song. That okay, was. I don't- that was specifically because anger. I wanted it to sound like it was being broadcast from like a satellite. Yeah, I think space. that that's like a very specific choice for a specific part of the song. Like, I think yeah. out of all of us, I'm the most likely to be like, I want everything to sound stepped on and gross. Um, but like, I think that that's just a product of I listen to like a fact ton of um, like punk music where shit sounds stepped on and that's just like like that's just like the norm and so i like that it makes me feel good it like scratches an itch in my brain but like it's a choice it's not like i make everything in the song sound like that it's like i know and i'm not i'm not accusing anyone or saying anything should or shouldn't i'm just like the it's just like the topic i'm interested in and you know what think it's uh it's interesting to have this you guys aren't Metallica fans, but uh, when Metallica made St. Anger, that's exactly yeah, what you're talking about, uh, Brett. And it's funny because I didn't, I was a Metallica fan when I was uh, in middle school and high school. Um, I went through a big Metallica phase, just to and let you know. So when St. Anger came out, I didn't hear it right away. Like I didn't hear it for like over a year or something. And then I think someone borrowed me the CD. And I'm like, I'm going to put this on. Like, it can't sound as bad as everyone says it sounds because everyone's talking mad shit about the sound of the record. And uh, um, so I put on the record and the first song starts and I'm like, oh, that's cool. It's like, 
it's like they're doing like a lo-fi beginning and like it's just going and then after like a minute i was like holy shit it's not a lo-fi beginning it's just the record sounds like this and that was way off the deep end what what uh actually what offended people especially because i was recording a lot of like uh metalcore bands at the time who were into you know other medical metalcore bands like <laughs> Dillinger medical. Escape Plans, D- Dillinger Escape Plan, um, the Bob Ross. Wait, not Bob Ross. <laughs> wait, Bob Rock. Happy little trees. Happy. Bob Ross's medical core album. Yeah, Such Bob Bob Ross medical medical core. Yeah, Rick Ross. Uh, Bob Bob Rock said that he wanted to incorporate some of the things that was were happening in like this new hardcore and metal metalcore scene and that kind of irritated everyone in that scene because all of those records so- sounded 10 times better than St. Anger. Anyway, okay. Yeah, so St. Anger I think everyone Whoa. thought was a failure. Um, Gabby's Gabby's I'm over here ready doing for the props today. <laughs> she's she's doing like costume changes. That incredible are topic appropriate. Yeah. Speaking of Bob Ross, I just started watching a great show called Painting with John. It's amazing. The first the first episode is called Bob Ross was wrong. No, he wasn't. Well, I was I watch him for ASMR qualities and to help me relax. Have you seen that one though? Like Painting with John, it's really I I just listened and I'm like what does the visual look like to this audio that we're listening to? And he turns it around and it's just like the dude in front of like a black screen, just like talking and (laughs) sharing these ridiculous stories. Like the one time that he witnessed the miraculous. Did he, is that what, is that the phrasing that he used Shane? I think so. With with Barry White. (laughs) All right. So, Lo-fi. What are our final thoughts on lo-fi? Because oh, I'm geez. not uploading another hour-long video. I don't. <laughs> My have, computer uh, will just fucking commit suicide if I try to make it do it again. My final thought is that there is no final thought on lo-fi. If there's a magic quality that I'm digging, I'm okay with lo-fi. I agree with Jenna. Yeah, I'm if not sure sounds- if there's a hard and fast uh, rule for it. If it sounds like a band just recorded in a bedroom and there's like echoes off the walls everywhere and it's making the recording muddy as shit, then it's not good. Lo-fi I think it, it I needs like to it. fit the 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 vibe of the song, you know, mm-hmm. like like the reason that the girly sound tapes sound like good, even though they're technically bad, <laughs> is because like. It's that's that's just like the vibe of the song is like, fuck you, you try to put me in my place, but I don't fucking care. I'm gonna do what I want, you know. And like that's that's like the whole vibe of all of those 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 songs. So like, it totally makes sense in that context. Whereas like, I, s- I also think that the parts of the song still need to come through. If it's so lo-fi that you can't understand what's happening or discern. The, the parts of the music that make them I mean good, I think then it's it's yeah. kind of wrecked. I think that like the importance of having like a good engineer is like that's the difference between like a good and a bad lo fi album because your engineer's gonna tell you like at a certain point like bitch you can't hear any of this. Like you can't discern the parts because they're all so lo fi that you just sound like you're just listening to like a fucking like radiator fan kick on you're like i don't know <laughs> what you're I'm listening to an album through a phone speaker and you're like then it's that it's no good yeah it's like if i like took my phone and was like here listen to this you'd be like what the, f- what the hell <laughs> i think things can sound good very good very high quality and i think they can sound considerably bad or even very poor quality um I think it matters on the artist. I think it matters on the song. And I think it matters on the listener too. I mean, if we went back in time to 78 era vinyl, 
it's all lo fi at that point. Like there is no hi fi um, before like the 50s. The 50s um, were when kind of it was getting better i, I want to yeah, say yeah i mean we we've, we've talked about this before where it's like at a like at a certain point like i don't even like listening to like older you know like music mm-hmm. that came out before like the year 1950 because it just sounds like shit <laughs> yeah cuz it's right. like the the technology they had just was not able to capture the the breadth of of sounds but then some sometimes things have even eras of music or uh, different types of music, like uh, the recording quality can kind of give it nostalgia. Nostalgia. So immediately sure. what I'm thinking of is like 60s era samurai films. Um, they have these string arrangements to them, but everything is like super mid rangey. Like there's, it's not like very full spectrum at all. And it just has to do with how they could record an orchestra um, at that time in that part of the world. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't think it matters. Uh, some of my favorite lo-fi things are the Liz fair girly song sounds thing. I like another one of my favorites is B thousand by guided by voices. Um, some more modern stuff is the rural Alberta Advantage. They have this song called Don't Haunt This Place, I Don't think. Don't haunt this place. Don't haunt the place. Yeah. That's that's kind of low. That's on the borderline of being low fi what, what about Iron and Wine? Aren't they like and dark. Wi-Fi or not Wi-Fi. <laughs> yes. Wi-Fi. They're Wi-Fi, Brett. Damn it. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Why am I so dumb? But yeah, like I, I would just assume that that dude records super high hi fi and then makes it sound bad. I gotta be honest, I've never really listened to Iron and Wine. I'm sorry. Mm, I'm there. <laughs> okay. I was kind of upset when like indie music went through this like uh Americana thing in the late two thousands. Cause I I was I was excited for synthesizers and computers and stuff, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, everyone's like, "Oh, look at what we found an acoustic guitar! Let's write all of our songs on this brand new instrument that we just discovered." It's like Jesus Christ! Yeah, Add something to it that's You're modern. Not adding to the conversation, bruh. Yeah, I'm just gonna shut my ass up. I'm not gonna Why? say anything. I kind of like you? Iron Wine. They have a you song like that's a about Milwaukee. Fun fact. Yeah, I it's don't know anything Winter about Winter Prayers. Holden likes Iron Iron and Wine. Holden, I mean, like, I don't. Lawrence. I think it's just like it's one of those things where it's like I don't have like it's. It would be weird if that was the only thing I listened to. Like that'd get really boring really fast. That that's such like a it's becoming a looking back on it it was a cliche like 2010 hipster culture was like something and then they had the ampersand and something else like iron and wine of and vampires, they would time, mice and mo- monsters and mice and men of uh, monsters and mice and men Mumford and sons, sons yeah but or or but and I think a lot of like restaurants and bars too like Croft and Barrel. Mm, e- What's that Br- butcher and uh, birch and butcher or something? Mm-hmm. That's down. I, actually, I don't I actually like how many that. of these could be named off of the top of our heads. That feels bad. All right, let's stop shitting on random uh, trends and just say lo-fi. The jury's out. If it sounds good, it is good. Adios. <laughs> Bye, Jeff Robinson. Bye, Jeff. <laughs>